help me find our daughter on a family hiking trip. Our six-year-old daughter, Dot Agnes, has gone missing. But despite calling out her name repeatedly, there's no sign of her anywhere. It's your fault for taking your eyes off her. You go find her yourself. My husband, Leek sick coldly, shoots back amid the chaos and drives off alone. Wait, don't leave! I shout, chasing after the car, but my voice doesn't reach him. Thanks, alone in the woods. I'm filled with dread about what will happen if I can't find Agnes. My name is Marley. I'm 35. Agnes, who just turned six, is a very kind and adorable daughter. Ick, who usually dislikes family outings, had suddenly suggested going hiking the day before. Ick, the same age as me, is domineering and doesn't listen to others, a trait that's always bothered me. I wasn't thrilled about the hike since my asthma had been acting up for the last three days. This a clean air will cheer your annoying asthma. He decided without hearing our opinions. Wendy started speaking to me so harshly. He was a kind person when we first got married. Is this how a couple ends up after eight years of marriage? On the day of the hike, we drove for about two hours to get to the mountain. And upon arrival, Agnes jumps for joy. Wow, look, Mom. I found these for you. She hands me acorns and pine cones. She's collected. See, told you it would be good. Let's enjoy nature to the fullest. Yes, I'm glad Agnes is enjoying it. Although Zeke usually sleeps all day during his days off, today he's oddly excited, which feels a bit off. But I was happy that we could finally spend a normal family day. Let's go further in. The view is supposed to be amazing. After about 30 minutes of walking, I'm exhausted. Please, can we slow down a bit? If you don't keep up, we're leaving you behind. Come on. Mom, hurry up. The two of them get further and further away. I'm running low on stamina and my throat starts making alarming noises as a cough sets in. Asthma here would be disastrous. Agnes is with Zeke, so she'll be fine. I should go at my own pace. Fix as in mother 30 minutes later. I spot Zeke, but there's no sign of Agnes. This Agnes. She was with you, right? Yeah, she was, but she wanted to explore further and ran off. You let her go alone. She's too energetic for me to keep up with. If you're worried, go find her. The direction Zeke points to is full of dense trees, and the path isn't clear. I must find her quickly. This is dangerous. Agnes, where are you? Answer me. I desperately start calling out for her but can't find her, and there's no response. About 20 minutes later, Scan Eden Leet City, I returned to where Zeke was, only to find him chatting with a young woman in her 20s. Ah, this lady just told me she saw a young girl walking towards the parking lot. I guess I'll go too. No, you should keep looking in the woods. Zeke heads down the mountain with the woman, making their way to the parking lot. I search again in the direction Ings went. It's eerily quiet, and I don't sense anyone around. I come to think of it. I've hardly seen anyone since we got here except for that woman. What if I can't find her? Ings, please answer me. I call out Ings's name over and over, 
but it just seems to get swallowed by the woods. Zeke isn't answering his phone, and they notice my cell has no service. Not knowing what else to do, I go back to the parking lot. I find Zeke chatting with the woman. They're both smiling, so I assume Aang's must have been found. Where is Aang's? Nope, she wasn't here. What? Why are you so relaxed then? I couldn't hold back my frustration. Despite Aang's still being missing, Zeke was happily chatting with the young woman. I don't get why you're mad. Thought you worried about Aang's? Let's look again together. Enough. This is your fault for losing her. You'll find her yourself. I'm going full. Like that. He hops into his car and drives off. Wait, you can't be serious. I tried chasing the car. Finally, it hits me that I should call the police, but I can't get a signal. After a desperate search for a signal, I finally reached the police, only to learn Aang's was safely found by a passerby. I hail a taxi to go get her. As soon as Aang sees me, she runs to me crying. Mom, thank God you're okay. Are you hurt? No, Mom. I was scared. I'm so sorry. Aang's. Maybe it's the relief, but I can't stop coughing. Aang's gently rubs my back. Mom, are you okay? Don't worry. We'll go to the hospital right away. I thank the police officer, and we head to a nearby hospital for my asthma treatment. Luckily, it's not severe, and I start feeling better after the inhaler. But then Aang drops a bombshell. Mom, one of Dad's friends, told me about a place full of beautiful flowers. It was with her, and the next thing I knew, I was alone. Wait, you didn't go exploring in the woods? No, I wouldn't do that. Things pulls out her toy camera and shows me a picture she'd taken. Etched, it was of a young woman Zeke had been with earlier, and they were snuggled up, clearly more than just friends. Could he be cheating? There, Mom, are you okay? Still coughing. I'm fine. Seeing Agnes's worried face. I realized I couldn't give in now. He won't get away with this. I'm going to dig deep to keep Seek from knowing my whereabouts. I turned off my phone's location and decided to stay at my brother's nearby apartment. But from that day on, my distrust for Zeke, who was not only unapologetic but also blatantly lying, only deepened. He didn't even ask which hospital I was in. He's probably with her right now, planning something awful. I was burning with rage, but I had to wait until I saw the truth for myself. Finally, Z came home late at night and left for work at his usual time the next morning. In the meantime, I bought a small security camera and installed it indoors. I could view its footage, including audio, directly on my phone. Now I had Zeke under surveillance. That night, the woman I saw in the mountains walked into our house, and they started having dinner while drinking wine in the living room. Seeing them get touchy-feely made me nauseous. It's, it was a good idea to take advantage of my wife's sickness and take her to the mountain. This one week she's in the hospital will be heaven. You are so clever, boss. Right now, we can relax without anyone disturbing us. It's not comfortable being together at work, but you always say the thrill makes it better. 
trail. It seems his affair partner is a subordinate at his workplace, and they even seem to be doing something suspicious at work. I can't believe this. Absolutely unforgivable. They were laughing happily, hugging each other. Touched now was my chance to catch them in the act. I left my brother's house, entered mine quietly, and approached the living room be confirming they were in the middle of it all. I started recording on my phone. Then I opened the door with a loud noise. Well, well, aren't we lively? Why are you here? You're supposed to be in the hospital? Tow ow ow. Caught off guard. They couldn't even separate. Help? Someone help seeing the two of them in agony. I've gone past shock and now just feel pathetic. Please call an ambulance. The sirens wail and a crowd gathers outside our home because Zeke and the woman were screaming so loudly. Neighbors are starting to take notice. The two of them, covered only with bed sheets, are loaded into the ambulance as his wife. I follow them to the hospital. Not long after arriving and getting medical attention, Zeke and his mistress are released. The doctor said they were free to go, so the two of them are shivering on a hospital bench, wrapped only in sheets as they have no clothes. This is just pathetic. When did you get out of the hospital? I ask. I was never admitted in the first place. I've been keeping tabs on you, you know. What? Tell? From my brother's new apartment and has a clear view of our house. I sighed and handed them hospital pajamas I borrowed from the nurse's station. I couldn't bear to watch their disgrace any longer. They hurriedly put on the pajamas. So how long has this been going on? I inquire. You got it all wrong. She just came to drop off some work documents. Oh, really? I tell Zeke about what I heard from Angs and show him the picture she took. This is you. You left Angs alone in the mountains just to get cozy with her, didn't you? That's not true. She was gone when I realized it. Ick tries to play dumb as I replay the conversation I heard between them in the living room. But both Zeke and the woman are clearly shaken. Still going to deny it. I ask. Well, about that. I can't believe you waited for me to be away to meet up with her. What's wrong with you? Look who's talking. You're the one spying on me. Can you say that after leaving our sick child and me alone in the mountains, seeing Zeke's lack of remorse, I could feel my feelings for him dwindling away. I'll never forgive you for putting a gangs in danger. Let's get a divorce. Divorce? Why? How can you even ask that? If you're so well matched with her, then just go be with her. X as I glare at the woman sitting next to me, she glares back and tries to intertwine her arm with Zeke's. However, Zeke shakes off her arm and grabs my hand. I was just messing around with her. I never intended to ruin our family, and to be honest, it was painful and awful. So I'm breaking up with her. The woman's face contorts like a demon's and she slaps Zeke across the face. Are you kidding me? Enough. I'm tired of women who are only younger. That's cruel. You said you'd marry me after you divorce. Perching their quarrel unfold. I'm beyond disgusted. 
both the woman who knew he was married and Zeke, who would surely repeat this behavior, are to blame. Cut it out. This is a hospital. Keep it down. Finally, both quiet down at my scolding. Seems like they both need a heavy dose of self-reflection. You better prepare yourself. I'm reporting you to the police for abandoning me and our young daughter in the mountains when I was sick. What? Is that a crime? Of course it is. Ikes, please give me a break. Just forget the police. Up suddenly backtrack, looking up at me apologetically, although they're saying sorry their hearts aren't in it. I bet that's not all. I want the house sold for the division of property and $30,000 for infidelity compensation. But, but to explorers, don't forget the child support for Angs. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. And you who laid hands on Zeke owe me $30,000 in damages as well. We can't afford that. Not my problem. You'll have to take out loans. Oh God, if you've learned anything, stay away from men with families. Got it. Please rethink this. Ike suddenly bows down to the floor in apology and the woman hastily follows suit. What is there to rethink now? I looked down on both of them with disdain. No way. They'll inform your company about this as well. Goodbye.